Hi everyone, my name is Miranda and I'm your Enchantress of Avalon. This week we're going to be doing a historical video that is going to be focusing on the belief that Anne Boleyn was in fact a witch, which also explains my outfit today. Uh, I am wearing my Six Wives of Henry VIII t-shirt, which plays on the little nursery rhyme. Divorce beheaded, died, diverse beheaded, survived. <laughs> so it has all of the six wives, including Anne right here. And I'm wearing my bee necklace, which I bought both because of Anne Boleyn, it being an Anne Boleyn reference, and because my maiden name was also started with a B. So it was an initial for me as well. Now, this little headpiece I'm wearing was my attempt at making something that resembled in any way a French hood style look. So I used some of my jewelry supplies with some fake pearls and did that up. I don't know how much I succeeded, but I thought it looked cute for the theme. In any case, I want to preface this whole video by saying that witchcraft was in fact not one of the charges officially levied against Anne in 1536. She was charged and accused of and officially charged with both adultery and incest. That was all. Uh, treason was actually not even technically in the mix because the treason law stated that it was treason for a man to defile a queen but it was not treason yet for a queen to commit adultery. So therefore her infidelity was just an infidelity. It was just adultery, period. Um, so those were what she was charged with and what she was officially killed for. But that being said, we have so many sources that reference this idea of Anne being a witch. So that's what today's video is going to focus on. I'm super excited. It's a favorite topic of mine because as we all know, I love anything related to magic and witchcraft and I love anything related to the Tudor period and especially Anne Boleyn. She is my all-time favorite queen. She's my favorite of Henry's wives. Doesn't mean that I hate the other wives. I, I don't. I think that Catherine of Aragon and Anne Boleyn being pitted against each other all the time is kind of unfair. And I know that historians are trying to move past that now. And I really, really appreciate that because Catherine of Aragon was an incredible queen. Just because I prefer Anne to her and I prefer, Anne, prefer Anne's story and I feel drawn to it and I in some way identify with Anne in a way that I could never identify with Catherine does not mean that I don't like Catherine. If there's one that I just don't care for, it probably would actually be Jane Seymour, not just because of her role in Anne's downfall, but because I'm just going to say it. She was boring. I feel about Jane Seymour the same way I feel about Fanny Price out of all of the Austin heroines. I feel Fanny Price is boring, so I don't like her. And that's basically it. I just, I find her not interesting and that's all. Um, but back to Anne and her witchcraft accusations. From the very beginning, she beguiled and bewitched Henry with her beauty and with her personality and her joie de vivre and her love of learning and her intellect. So of course, she knew all about the courtly love values of the day. She was incredibly well read and she lived in France for years and years. And she was taught at the court of Margaret of Austria as a finishing school when she was still very young. She learns the tenets of courtly love and she learns how to live by them. And she was very damn fucking good at doing this. So yeah, of course. Um, What we know of the era, the only really solid documentation we have associating Anne with witchcraft in 
1536 is Henry himself saying that he felt like he had been bewitched by this woman and that she had tricked him into loving her and marrying her and he felt very betrayed because of this that is all we have which is words of a very very upset man who believes his wife is cheating on him and I want to briefly go into this I personally do not feel that Henry orchestrated Anne's downfall at all. I think the architect of her downfall was, and I've always believed this, was Thomas Cromwell. Not to say Henry couldn't do it, but to say, what, what the actual fuck? Why would you think he would do this when he was in this whole thing? Calling himself a cuckold. He was calling himself this man who was betrayed by his wife. He was literally letting it be said, if he orchestrated this, he was encouraging it to be said that his wife thought he was bad in bed and that she needed to get her something on the side because she wasn't being satisfied sexually. No man is going to want to admit this. No man is going to orchestrate this to be the case. And certainly no king. And everything we know about Henry's personality states that he was so obsessed with his own image and his own show of being virile and sexual. He, he would never want himself seen in this light. So I have to believe very firmly that he would not have let the trials take place the way they did or these accusations be made unless he believed them. And I think the reason he believed them was these were his worst fears re being realized. This was his worst fears being made manifest. People were telling him, yeah, hon, your wife, she's been fucking all these guys. And guess what? She, I also have this evidence that she fucked her own brother. Just, It's not realistic. It is absolutely ludicrous. And I think it's also absolutely ludicrous to say that he didn't love her. I know that there's this, like, hashtag me to viewpoint of he couldn't have ordered her execution if he loved her. The reality of it is you wouldn't feel so betrayed if there wasn't love there first. And that's why we get that whole theory, that whole you know, phrasing that there's a thin line between love and hate. Well, there is. You feel the most betrayed by someone who actually had your heart, had your soul, so. I want to make that very clear. In my personal opinion, I think, first of all, Henry did love her. I think Anne, if she didn't love Henry in the very beginning, grew to love him. And Henry was a catch at the time when Anne met him. He was not this bloated, obese tyrant he would become. He was a young, good-looking, highly intelligent king. There was absolutely no reason for her not to just fall in love with him the only thing that kept her in any way distanced was that he was already married and she didn't want to be a mistress and she ended up becoming queen through all of this so I want to say that now yes the only thing that we have in the actual original time frame was him accusing her of bewitching him and what have you and we do know that he and Anne had consulted with different astrologers and had books of prophecy brought out, which are kind of like tarot, uh, to try and predict if they would have a son. This was very common practice in the age, and there's no reason to think that this was in any way her practice in witchcraft. Although, um, in my short story I just posted on my blog, this weekend uh, as I'm doing sort of an Anne Boleyn theme across both my blog and my YouTube channel here. Uh, I did go into this that I believe that if she was a witch and was practicing witchcraft, she was doing it uh, for fertility reasons and also to help Henry out. So yeah, I don't think she was at all doing anything against him or trying to seduce him with witchcraft. I think that's utter nonsense. Um, So there is this belief that 
Jane Boleyn had, who was George Boleyn, Anne's brother's wife, out of jealousy had made some of these accusations. And then there's also this whole thing about a deathbed confession that she confessed that she was, she had lied about this back when she was, you know, also partying it up with Catherine Howard. Yes, she's connected to both of Henry's wives who were beheaded. So, yeah. Uh, which is a very interesting thing. I could definitely get into that if anyone is interested in the story of Catherine Howard and the story of how Jane Boleyn was connected to both of those times in English history. Anyway. So, then I'm just going to uh, say that this has been brought to us throughout history and she's very often um, used when we're talking about famous witches. She is often featured in things down to if you watch the you know first Harry Potter movie you see her on the hall in the halls of Hogwarts as one of a former as one of you know the witches a former student at Hogwarts. She's featured on the wall. She is also um, featured, mentions that is, not once but twice in the Netflix original series, The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, which of course I watch because witches. Uh, <laughs> although the whole satanic witches, I think that could have been handled better. Most witches are not sat like the witches are not satanists. It some might be, but this whole connecting witches to the devil started in the anti-witchcraft thing so but I think the show is really well done I think it's very funny and very fun to watch um and I truly enjoyed the fact that they said yeah Anne Boleyn was a witch uh both sh her name is called forth when they are doing um trying to at least exercise a demon and then as like fall, other witches who had been who had had a fall so she's called forth and then finally uh also when they're quizzing during a quiz to prove who should be head boy or in this case head student uh she is also mentioned as a witch and they she answered some trivia questions about her however I will state that they, in that show, use 1501 as her definitive birth date. We don't know her definitive birth date. We know her death date is May 19th of 1536. That is all we know. So, yeah, we have this interpretation of Anne as a witch, and it has held it together for centuries. But a lot of that is after the fact. And if you want to know more about just the cultural significance of Anne Boleyn I highly recommend this book it is by an author named Susan Bordeaux and it's called it's entitled The Creation of Anne Boleyn A New Look at England's Most Notorious Queen I absolutely adore this book it is so amazing so I hope that you will if you're interested in theories about Anne and how her story has evolved after her death especially this is a great read and I hope you've enjoyed this little trip back to ye old Tudor England. And once again, my name is Miranda. I am an author, I'm a writer who runs the blog whiterosevavalon.life. And I'm also your Enchantress of Avalon who has taken you on this journey. Have a great weekend and I will see you next Sunday.